Have you ever wondered what a fantastic hypothetical answer looks like? Welcome to video number 10 in our 20 part video series. This is our Q and A feedback based on my AI tool. So excited to have everybody here. And for the purpose of this video and all 20 videos, we're gonna have the same exact setup. I'm going to throw out a question to you. We're gonna look at a specific role at a specific company. We're gonna quickly scroll through the job description. I'm gonna provide an overview slide of what I think the perfect answer looks like. Then I'm actually gonna give what I think is a really strong answer. And then on the background, I've run that answer through my practiceinterviews.com AI tool to make a good answer even better. For all these questions, it's basically like we need to look at the foundation. What are these foundational items that we're really looking to uncover? So if it's a not a network engineer role at Microsoft, but just any role, what are the steps? And that's what I want you to look for in any of these videos in this series. The other context that I always want to provide is with any hypothetical question, when I give the answer in this format, there's no audience, right? It's not responsive, so it's going to feel incredibly long. But just remember, hypothetical answers in a job interview, they're going to be broken up a little bit. They're going to be a little bit more conversational. Thanks so much for being here. Let's dive in. So today's hypothetical question, if you noticed unusual traffic patterns that could indicate a potential network security breach, how would you approach investigating and resolving the issue? So again, network engineer at Microsoft, and this is specifically for a principal cloud network engineer for the purpose of all these videos. I want to put the job description in here and put it as pasted in in case the link were to expire, but reading through it, probably not a great use of our time. You can see that this is a relatively robust job description. Obviously, if you want to pause at any moment, you can. Then here is our CFAST method. This is my preferred method for answering all hypothetical questions. We're going to come in, we're going to clarify, provide a framework, create some role specific assumptions, and then ultimately provide multiple solutions. And we're going to have some good transition statements in there. If you want to pause the video right now to take a deeper look at this, great. And then we'll revisit it at the end of the video as well. So just to get into flow, let's restate that question. If you noticed unusual traffic patterns that could indicate a potential network security breach, how would you approach investigating and resolving the issue? Okay, before diving in, I'd like to ask a few clarifying questions. Is the unusual traffic pattern localized to a specific region within our global network infrastructure or widespread across multiple regions? I'd also want to know, has there been any recent deployment or change in the network configuration that might correlate with the observed traffic patterns? And then are the observes, or observed patterns indicative of a potential DDoS attack, or do they suggest unauthorized access potentially to internal systems? A few items we might want to consider before solving are the nature and scope of the traffic anomaly, potential vulnerabilities, recent network changes, and the type of security breach we might be dealing with. Specifically, we should focus in on some of the following items. Traffic analysis, do an over, overall vulnerability assessment, look at change management, threat identification, incident response, really wanna focus in on stakeholder communication, forensic analysis, remediation strategies, and then we'll bring in continuous monitoring and compliance and report it. So I'm going to assume uh, that we will deploy advanced network monitoring tools and intrusion detection systems like Sonic, Artista, Cisco, and Juniper devices. And we will rely on internal traffic logs, external threat intelligent feeds, and third-party analytics for a comprehensive analysis. So let's start by discussing traffic analysis and vulnerability assessments. So diving into traffic analysis and a vulnerability assessment, the initial step involves deploying network monitoring tools across the affected regions to gather detailed traffic logs. 
This would involve analyzing ingress and egress traffic patterns to identify anomalies, such as unexpected a source or destination IPs, unusual traffic volumes, or uncharacteristic protocols and ports usage. Leveraging machine learning algorithms could help in distinguishing between benign anomalies and potential security threats by comparing current traffic with historical baselines. Simultaneously, a vulnerability assessment is conducted to scan the network for known vulnerabilities and misconfigurations that could be exploited by attackers. This assessment would leverage the latest vulnerability databases and proprietary Microsoft intelligence to identify unpatched systems, default credentials, or exposed services. Collaboration with product and service teams would ensure that any identified vulnerabilities are quickly patched or mitigated through configure changes or segmentation policies. These actions are critical for narrowing down the scope of the investigation, identifying the potential attack vectors, and formulating an effective response strategy. Coordination with the SOC team for real-time monitoring and the implementation of threat intelligence feeds would enhance the detection capabilities, providing insights into known malicious IPs, domains, and signatures associated with recent cyber threats. I think let's move on and talk a little bit about incident response and forensic analysis. Focusing in on in incident response and forensic analysis, the next steps involve activating the incident response protocol, which includes isolating affected systems to prevent the spread of the breach and preserving evidence for forensic analysis. Establishing a command center facilitates communication among the incident response team, stakeholders, and external partners, such as law enforcement, if necessary. Forensic analysis plays a crucial role in understanding how the breach occurred, the extent of the intrusion, and identifying the attacker's tactics, techniques, and procedures. This involves a detailed examination of logs, memory dumps, and affected systems to trace the attacker's movements within the network and uncover any data exfiltration or lateral movement. Insights gained from this analysis are vital for us improving our defenses against future attacks. And then throughout this process, maintaining transparent and timely communication with stakeholders is paramount. This includes providing regular updates to senior management, coordinating with legal and PR teams to manage external comms, and ensuring compliance with regulatory reporting requirements. Let me round things out by discussing success metrics. In the context of success metrics and outcomes, evaluating the effectiveness of the incident response and recovery efforts is crucial. KPIs include the time to detect and respond to the breach, the extent of system and data compromise, the effectiveness of containment and eradication efforts, and the time to resume normal operations. Additionally, measuring the impact on customer trust and compliance with regulatory requirements provides a holistic view of the incident's aftermath. Post-incident analysis and lessons learned sessions are essential for continuous improvement. This involves reviewing the incident response process, identifying gaps in security posture, and implementing recommendations to prevent recurrence. Metrics such as reduction in detection time improvements in response procedures, and increased resilience against similar attacks serve as indicators of enhanced security maturity. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, whew, those hypothetical answers feel crazy long and robust, again, without any interaction from our audience, but we're gonna break it apart solution by solution, so hopefully they're engaging and interacting with us. So run it through the tool and let's see what the feedback is. Okay, so on the clarification, a few other questions you might wanna consider. Do we have real-time network monitoring system? Yes or no. Is this suspicious traffic internal or external? Internal or external is always a great question. Are we working with a cybersecurity team presently? Decent question, probably at Microsoft, yes. Have we experienced such a breach before and what was the result? Okay, and so that's also a good question. That historical data, knowing if it's happened in the past, is valuable. All good feedback. 
Okay, on the framework, one small improvement could be to keep it a bit more concise. You can combine related concepts together to shorten the list. For instance, traffic analysis and vulnerability assessment can be put under a broader category like initial invest investigation, while incident response and forensic analysis can be placed under response and analysis. So it allow you to have a shorter and crisper outline without losing the essence of your answer. Okay, obviously, the longer the framework, we could lose our interviewer a little bit. So the framework was 10 concepts. And so this is kind of limiting the concepts down. Really, really good feedback. Okay, and the transition before assumptions, you can use a direct statement like, before moving into potential solutions, let's confirm a few assumptions. Mine really just went right into the assumptions. I didn't have that transition statement. Okay, your assumptions lack details and specificity that directly correlate to the context of network security. Okay, instead of only stating about deploying specific tools, try to provide assumptions like, we have sufficient internal capacity to manage and address any issues identified, which would be common at Microsoft. This traffic pattern doesn't result from a planned network stress test or similar internal event. I also like that. Despite our existing network security measures, we are dealing with a potential security breach here. Great item to build a, a strong answer. These role-specific assumptions are relevant to the context of the problem and can guide your solution. Yeah, and role relevancy in our assumptions is key, and then role relevancy in connection with the size or type of organization is also critical. Okay, solution one, try to avoid being too technical and include a bit about how these measures align with the role's responsibility and impact on the organization. The first solution was technical. And always when you're going after a technical role, I definitely want you to embed some technical knowledge, but it, when I was reading it, it felt a little technical. Um, solution two, ensure to briefly link these actions back to how it fulfills the job requirement of ensuring network stability and risk management. Okay, yes, yeah, stability and risk management were really not built into that second solution. Okay, also good feedback. Solution three, three, remember to link back how all this ties into the aspect of innovation and operational efficiency mentioned in the job description. So whenever we're answering a hypothetical question in a job interview, we want to make sure we're tying it back to the roles and responsibilities of the job as much as possible. And so that was very specific, very good feedback. And then we're going back to just our trusty reference point here. And you can see I didn't ask a ton of clarifying questions. There was an opportunity there. Um, on the framework, connect the concepts back to the core questions. So it wanted me to couple those concepts. The assumptions really were not speaking enough from the perspective of the role, like it mentioned. And then the solutions also detail the actions that would solve the question. It wanted a little bit more connectivity there and a little bit less technical. Wow, these hypothetical questions, when I do these videos, it's always a lot. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. If you have not done it yet, in the YouTube description, click on the link and become an early adopter for practiceinterviews.com AI tool. What this guarantees is when we launch, you're going to get a discount. Secondly, we're letting some early adopters onto the platform to test it for free. And some people are giving us fantastic user feedback. Thanks so much for watching.